hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to do some paint pouring and some resin pouring on these bears that I picked up. Now these are the standard bears that people I guess use for paint pouring and I just found them on Aliexpress. Actually a friend of mine gifted them to me but they found them on Aliexpress I think and I just wanted to like try out not only doing a standard paint pour with some pouring medium and acrylic paints but also doing a resin pour. Now my resin is quite thin so I needed to think of ways to like thicken it up a little bit to make it work because resin uh, with the long curing time and it being thin it would just run right off without like sticking to the sculpture at all. So I thought a long while about this, I actually had them for a couple weeks and my instinct went with starch. You use starch for cooking, so I thought maybe it would also work for resin. So I mixed up a lot of starch into this and then I used some like teals, greens, blues and purples with some black to get a like, kind of galaxy esque effect but still like very vibrant colors that would hopefully show up nicely on this figure. As you can see I'm using a like leather box to pour this in. I actually use this box normally to like put my port stuff in to keep out like any kind of fluffs or like flies and stuff and to also keep the fumes in a little bit and I just basically used this. I made sure to still be able to fit on the lid so I could close it. I used this like offcast uh, mold on the bottom to hold it and then I added some tape to be able to like hang the bear. As you can see this really has the like consistency of like poor acrylics which is what I went with but I think with the curing time it may have been a little bit too liquid. But I went in like the same method that you usually do, just like turning the figure around and then like covering the bottom first to make sure that all the like overhangs had color so there would be no gaps in there and then I went in from the top. So let's uh, hope that works out and then while that was curing I went in with the standard paint pour. And for that I just mixed some acrylic medium purely with paint and these paints actually had very different consistencies because they were from different brands so in one, some of them I have to add more pouring medium. I didn't really want to go with water because I know that can like change the weight of the paints and I wanted all of them to show up more or less evenly so just using the pouring medium and trying to get the consistency right was my solution. The pink kind of was a bit heavier so I didn't get it fully right, so it's probably not going to show up as much. But overall the other paints float very nicely and I know this will take like a bit of time to actually dry and in this time it will like run off a little bit more. I made sure to like go in with some tools and uh, remove all the paint in between the arm gaps and all that just to like you know in between where it was still drying and running they would fill up a little bit and I wanted to have them separated so I just went in with toothpick actually and separated them like randomly like every 20 minutes or so until the paint was dry enough where it didn't really flow down anymore and here's the dried bear. As you can see the stripes turned out very nicely. I as, uh, added a bit more pink throughout the pour, just added more layers because it didn't really like come through in the initial one and I'm happy I did because it has some nice accents although it's very few and I think the color scheme turned out nicely. And the bear looked a bit empty so I added some details on like the paws, the feet and the face and while that was drying actually the other bear was done too. I'm going to talk about the turnout of it a little bit more in detail later, but as you could see, the colors don't really pop, but they are definitely colors. So I'm adding a bit more of the face details, just making them look a bit more alive, you know, adding the ear details and all that. And all the while I was doing that, I was imagining of how I could utilize the thickening of the resin to my advantage. Now. There's one thing I was struggled with and that was using the paint cup to get multiple colored pores that would not like float together because of the resin movement when it was curing. And my idea was why not try with a little more starch 
to see if the colors would actually move around less. Because, you know, I made a whole other video about like using this divider cup to like get nice colors and the result was that yes in flat modes you could get this world a bit better but like any other mode it would just mix way too much to actually show all the details. So while I was working giving these bears some life I was thinking and I came to the conclusion I'm going to turn this video not into a paint pouring video but into a resin experiment video hence the title. So after like adding all the face details, I'm mainly using a ball stylus here to the bears. I waited for everything to dry, I gave them a gloss varnish coat. The paint is pretty shiny, so is the resin, but I just wanted to make sure that like everything was sealed and wouldn't actually get scratched because I'm planning on using them as keychain. The advantage of this not being like fully resin or anything is they are very light since it's a plastic base. And I think Overall, they turned out pretty cute. Now, of course, the paint pouring one turned out a little bit better with the swirls, but you still can see the separations in colors in the resin pour, and you can still see layers where it actually covered. Of course, I, uh, you know, I tried to remove the like little overflows on the hands and feet. I went in there every 20 minutes and removed it. But it still pulled a little bit on the hands and feet of the resin wear. I think I should have gone in one more time, but at this point it was pretty sticky and I didn't want to lift it off of the figure completely. But I still think he turned out kind of cute and I think the details make him like really worth being used as a keychain. And he was kind of the gateway into this whole experiment. I used like almost the same volume starch as I used resin in this case, which was quite a lot. And as you can see, I'm actually using like whey starch or like wheat flour starch in this case, and it turned it yellow. I know that cornstarch would have done the same from like using it in food and just from experiment. So it's definitely nothing you can use for like translucent colors if you don't want them to miss color or like this color or like, you know, the resin will be a bit more opaque due to the like nature of the mix in anyways. So I went with opaque colors and I chose these uh, Sophie and Toffee candy colors because I just like their vibrancy and how opaque they are and I think the like difference in colors would get a really nice like pop if it actually keeps the swirls. Now my camera of course cut out recording at this point. So here's it after the pour. And as you can see it definitely has the colors nicely separated but after the curing you can see they move quite a lot. I went with a pretty heavy consistency so there is air bubbles definitely in there. I think if you would use like a vacuum chamber or a like pressure chamber it would work. Since I poured this on a holiday Day, I couldn't really make noise, so I couldn't really use my vacuum chamber, but I still think they look absolutely adorable and the colors mix, but they didn't turn too muddy. So I think they gave this like very nice soft look and I absolutely love the cloud and the little hamster. But the reason why I chose the coaster mold is because these you usually pour in the middle and let it flow into the sides. And the movement of that plus the movement of curing is like really a sign to like show how well this like thickening of the resin prevented the like colors from moving while curing. Now there's still a little bit of definition in the colors, but I don't feel like there's much of a difference as if I would have poured it just without mixing in the starch unfortunately. Like this looks almost exactly like the tries I had with just using the silicone cup. But I didn't want to give up so I wanted to try again but without starch. Like the starch was very messy, it was a bit harder to get all the lumps out when mixing but I had one more medium I wanted to try and that is plaster. As you can see I'm just using some very normal plastic plaster and I needed actually way less to thicken the resin, like way more than what uh, um, extra starch did. It does have its own natural earthy tone, that is just the nature of the plaster. Maybe there's some plasters out there that have been dyed white and will be casting white. Like the plaster by itself actually casts pretty white, 
I used it for like a lot of sculptures before and it was always pretty white but for some reason with the resin it just turned like way more earthy so I decided to go with more na natural tones. I tried to like use very vibrant white, again using Morandi pigments from, just from Sophie and Toffee. Not sponsored but I do have an affiliate link, it's just that I like these pigments quite a lot. They're very pigmented, they turn out very nice, vibrant and shiny yeah, even after the cure. I didn't really notice any changes while the resin cure is with the pigments, so that is why I like to go with them. I went with a very bright yellow and a very bright orange and it still turned out this mustardy color so at this point I wasn't really sure how this turned out but as you could see even just while pouring it gave a very nice swirly effect and like I did with previous pour of this cup I always like pouring the first bit into like an excess cup container mode and that is just to like even out the stream to make the have the colors like on the same level, give them a chance to like spread evenly while I'm pouring them into the mold and this definitely worked. Now again I have some air gaps but the swirls actually stayed quite a lot. I think all the movement is in there just because I started pouring it from the middle and it flowing to the sides but the color stayed super separated, the color stayed in like the amounts that I added them into the cup like with a heavier white on the sides and then the yellow and the brown mixed in. So this definitely worked quite a charm and I absolutely love the look actually. I think it looks really nice and the earthy tones fit really well. As I said if you use another plaster that like turns or stays white and use maybe more like heavier pigments that like would color this more white I think you could get way more like vibrant and less earthy colors but I think this looks super good and it definitely is a thing that worked really nicely. I noticed even with the starch that like very thin layers they become pretty brittle but like these like most for the like little boats slash coasters worked out super super well so yeah definitely a thing to like try out if you want to keep this world for me it worked it might actually also be based on the resin a little bit mine was like a 12 hour hardening type resin so a quick cure basically usually it hardens in like 8 and 12 hours not fully cured but more than enough that there's no movement in there and you can actually demold it. So I don't know if like any more liquid long cure time type reddens will make a difference but overall this turned out so nice. I'm definitely going back to this technique experimenting a bit more with the amounts and stuff. Now I also wonder although at the time I was recording this video I didn't have this but if you would mix in something like raisin like a harder plaster, uh, plaster casting type stuff that is actually not really as brittle as this like casting plaster was. I wonder if it makes a difference. First of all it will obviously make the colors probably different since like things like raisin or like the like stone cast stuff is a bit more like prone to like be colored instead of just having the natural colors like this plaster did. So it might actually help you get more vibrant or different colors, but it also might help with the strength for like more shallow pores. I only have a uh, black raisin, but I might actually want to try it out for like other molds in the future. But for now that is how far this experiment goes and I'm quite impressed with the outcome of this. But started as a paint pouring experiment went into a resin experiment and it was a lot of fun and the outcome was quite surprising. Let me know in the comments down below uh, would you be interested in like making your resin or dance make, make like swirly stuff and all that and like what are your thoughts on the outcome of this? Do you like the more like mixed type of resin look or do you prefer the like more separated in color swirl-esque look? I hope this gave you guys some experiments to like try out for yourself, some like inspiration to use this. And as always, I hope to have a great day. See you next time. Bye bye.